Okay, so next question. How do we make an immersive scene feel even more immersive? Specifically, how do we work with audio to help heighten the sense of immersion with our user? Great question. And in this case, we'll go ahead and just start right away by creating another blank application for the Vision Pro. We'll call this one Sound. Feeling really creative. And while this loads up, I will caveat that if you're following along with any of these, you will eventually run out of abilities to push to your device if you haven't paid for a developer account, but you can just delete things that we put on there already. So all the small apps you put on there, if you delete them, you'll stay under your quota. It looks like you have four or five on there without running into any issues, but if you're not paying for that $99 license to have a full-on developer account, then uh, just delete what's on there uh, from your custom apps if you're running into any errors. But okay, needless to say, now we're in the app. Again, nothing crazy here. Hello world, show immersive space, the whole nine. We will jump right over to the immersive view. And once again, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out everything that's not imperative to this. So we'll take out the image-based lighting. Nothing wrong with that, but we'll just keep the two spheres in there for now. It'll be the two spheres in the black environment, and we will focus more so in this case on audio. So if we jump over to reality kit content, this is where all of our scene data is stored. Again, we've seen this one quite a few times with two spheres floating in the abyss. But now when we look at this, so again, packages, reality content, package, we can open this in Reality Composer Pro. Now Reality Composer Pro, if you aren't aware, uh, in terms of like a 10 second overview, this is where you compose all of your immersive scenes. So if you're working with 3D objects, if you're working with sound, if you're working with particles, it's all gonna be in this bad boy here. You can do a lot programmatically as well, but for ease of use, it's good to hop into this project browser uh, reality uh, kit content, reality composer pro, and just work with your scenes this way. So for this instance, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just create a brand new scene. Since we're working with audio, I will name this audiocontroller.usda. And this is like the file format that we're expecting from scenes. I believe it's either a .usda or a .usdz. Uh, these are both, I think, originally Pixar standards for how they go about animating scenes. Obviously, it's morphed a ton since they came out with that standard, but um, used now with Apple scenes in particular, there is a wide range of things that you can use, but for the sake of this demo, we'll stick with what's expected and kind of tried and true, which is this .usda structure. So again, nothing in our scene, but we don't really need anything in our scene in this instance. We're only worried about audio. So we'll look up here in the sidebar. This is where all of our objects will go for the scene that we are working on. Since we're not adding anything physical, what I'm gonna do is add audio. So we've got a couple different uh, options here for what audio can be added. We've got channel audio, which is almost like normal audio. If you think about like uh, just sound occurring and not really coming from anywhere, it's just sound coming straight to your ears. That's channel audio. You've got ambient audio, which is like uh, your ambient noise. You can hear uh, pluses and minuses coming through. Uh, one side is maybe louder if you're facing something specific. Um, but generally there's audio happening around you. It's just a little bit more heightened in terms of that immersion feel. And then spatial audio is where you're hearing the knock on a door that's over there. Something where you can channel audio directly towards the user very specifically. Uh, the way that you'll set up all of these audio files are pretty similar. Um, there's a little bit of tweak with something like spatial audio where you have to give a direction. But for the sake of this demo, we'll focus on ambient audio uh, just because it's a little bit more complex in channel. Uh, adds a little bit more. Oh no, what have I done? Try some time. That's a little bit more to the scene. So ambient audio, there we go. Ambient audio is under our root uh, portion of the scene. And you'll see right now, there's really nothing in it. You can set where the ambient audio is coming from. Not again, super relevant right this second because ambient audio tends to surround the user, uh, but we don't have anything actually playing yet. This is just the means of playing something if we have something to play. So. You can download a uh, sound, you can put rain noise in here from YouTube, you can uh, go out there, find a MP3 file, something like that. Uh, but built into this already, we can look, and we've got, if you click this top right plus sign, a ton of 3D objects in here you can play with, and I'm sure we will at some point with this demo series, but uh, on top of that, you've also got things like your audio library. And we'll just jump now to atmospheres, these are, some of the more chill ones, I'd say. You got sea in here, seagull, well cry. But for right now, let's just do atmospheres ocean. We will drag this into the scene. And what's great is you can configure a lot about your audio files when you're in here. 
This is the preview. I'm not sure if we'll even hear it, but it sounds like waves crashing on the ocean. Pretty nice, uh, very relaxing. But we'll pause that. And some options that you'll see on here right away. We do want this to loop. It's only 13 seconds long, so we want to play over and over. And we also will randomize the start time. So if a user's in here working on something in their immersive environment and we want them to be there for a long time, or they come here often, we don't want them to always have the same exact sequence. So this helps keep people a little bit more on their toes. It randomizes when things start and stop. And yeah, so I don't know, simple scene. We have our root, we have our ambient audio controller, and then we have our actual sound that's being played. So with this in mind, we will save. And you, when you save, you'll see the little yellow dot that was by that go away, just like you would with a lot of other things. We'll jump actually to our code again. And we will head back to this immersive scene. Now, what I'll do is let's go ahead and paste what I want to talk through versus like pretending to type it for you here again in a second. And we have the audio actually playing. So I'm just going to kill the sound for now. <laughs> um, and let's talk through what we've added. So it starts right here. And in this case, we're adding just another entity. And in this case, it's not two spheres floating up in space. It is this audio controller that we defined in that scene just a moment ago. So we want to create this entity by fetching uh, asynchronously this audio controller aspect of the scene we just made. So we tell it we want the audio controller, and uh, that's the scene name. If it exists, it'll bring it down. And if it doesn't, then it won't. But in our case, it should exist. It does exist. And that's great. So it'll return this entity. And then here, we want to find within that scene this ambient audio uh, controller that we added. So when we clicked on the bottom left-hand plus sign, added that ambient audio, that's what it's looking for. That's what we're providing. Then we define the audio file name. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky uh, just in terms of how this gets referenced. I can show you guys later a good way of seeing what this looks like if you're having trouble having this actually find it correctly. But in our case, we know it's slash root because it's in that root portion of the scene slash atmospheres ocean. For a lot of these, you'll have to also include, like, uh, if you add your own like, MP3, it'll be like the rest of the sound for that. But in our case, we don't, now we're having troubles because it's trying to play something that doesn't exist. OK, but Root Mr. Ocean, we don't need the MP3 uh, ending of that. And then this is where we kind of all wrap it up. We define a resource. We try to define an audio file resource providing that file name, where we can find the file, which is, again, in that scene that we defined in our reality kit content bundle. If it doesn't find it, we have an error. But again, this is just pointing straight back to this scene here, root slash amateur's ocean. That's our file. The scene is called audio controller, and the ambient audio controller is within that scene. Once we have that, we will ask it to prepare the audio. And then we will ask it to play the audio. And once we have it all configured, we'll add it to our content scene. And that's why when we play it in a second here, and we'll do it again in simulator first, so we can feel a little underwhelmed. And then we'll do it in the actual headset, so we can see a little bit more as to what it might feel like to be overwhelmed with how good it is. So it's a pretty quick show immersive space. I don't know if it's registering my clicks right now. There we go. Come on. Gotta love this soon. Okay, let's just restart this. Always something. Okay. What are we missing here? more time. Oh, well, we'll explain it. We didn't have the right thing clicked. OK, so we've asked to select it. Don't show me again. And here we are. Simulator, we'll turn the audio on. And I don't know if you can hear that in my microphone, but we've got some pretty loud ocean noise playing. Pretty cool. Uh, it feels a little flat again. On this one, it feels almost like channel audio coming out of the computer. 
But what I will do is I will go ahead and I will run it on the Vision Pro. So give me a second to ramp this up again. We will show the immersive space. Don't show again. And then, yeah, you probably won't hear this again either, but it's coming out my actual headset speakers now. It feels really nice, really mellow. Uh, definitely feels like I'm a little bit more present, even though it's just a big black sphere for now. Uh, but just a way of heightening, I guess, the feeling that you're actually in this sort of area. So uh, pretty cool. Well, we'll exit that. We'll close. And yeah, that is working with audio. And again, the other ones are going to be really, really similar. So I just encourage you, if you're interested in this at all, go ahead and keep pressing with working with the different types. And yeah, that should be a good start, hopefully, for anyone wanting to work with audio. Cool. On to the next.